The snatch. It is the most daunting technical movement it, that you can do in the weight room. But it is by far my favorite. And it, there's nothing quite like doing a solid snatch and hitting a PR in this lift. It's, it's like, it's just like shooting a basketball. You perfect it, and then once you can do it, it basketball becomes so fun. You know, or bowling. Play, you know, bowling when you don't have any technique, it's not very fun. Once you get the technique, it becomes a little bit more fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish all of the technical needs across the entire lift. If you've never done the snatch before, you will see this video. You can build up from zero to snatching this barbell. So in the previous video, we established the overhead position. All of those things uh, are going to apply here. So check out that previous video. Um, and then also our grip width we established and the hook grip we established. For myself, in order to get the bar into that waistband, uh, I have to have my grip at collar to collar. Got really long arms, guys. And what we're gonna always be thinking is not just pulling the shoulders kind of back and up, but just pulling the top of our head to the ceiling. This bar, as we work with it, is always gonna be fighting to pull us down like this. And as you see, the bar doesn't quite get into my waistband anymore. So I'm always gonna have to remind myself to stand up tall like that. The first drill we're gonna do, guys, is called the muscle snatch. And this really sets up our kinesthetic awareness of getting the bar from this hip contact to overhead. So here's what it looks like. One more. Okay, keys here that are gonna stay across this entire progression is our wrist position. And one of the things that I love to think about is curl your wrists underneath towards you. Okay, so if you know what a muscle up is, there's a thing called a false grip, like this. On the rings, if you can imagine, there's a ring here pulling me up like this. The reason we do a false grip is so that we have leverage as the ring gets closer to our center mass. If we don't, we're like this. And we have to get our elbows on top of that ring, right? So it's hard to get our elbow all the way like that. So we create this false grip. Now we can pull and our elbows can get on top of the, the ring. The exact same principle applies to the barbell, right? If our wrists are flat and straight like that, we pull our elbows high, we have to create this big moment arm to get that bar overhead. If we think, curl the knuckles underneath, we get the elbows high, now we have all that leverage to get the bar overhead. So that's what we're trying to do, is we're just pulling to the chest with the knuckles rolling underneath, elbows high. Boom, just like this. And then we can go overhead. When we go overhead, I want you to think of like a whip, elbow, whips to the hand. Elbow whips through the hand like that. We don't want to drop the elbow and press, okay? So that's gonna look like this. This is not what we wanna do. We'll be here, okay? Just like this. Okay, we're gonna look for this. Elbows high, wrists underneath, whip. And when we finish, once we see that bar pass our gaze, we can pull our chin down. Again, looking for that ideal overhead position. Elbows locked, shoulder blades together, chin slightly down. We don't wanna be way forward like this as we covered in that last video. Okay, so now if, if you haven't seen that first video, please go check it out uh, because we are going to connect this last drill that we just did to that entire video, okay? We're gonna do that muscle snatch, but while we're doing it, we're gonna hit our squat. So our feet are gonna be squat width apart. Again, we're pulling here, keeping the wrist curled underneath as we pull. We're gonna muscle snatch and hit that bottom position. Okay, elbows locked, shoulder blades together, hip crease below the knee crease. Those are the keys in that last video. We do not wanna miss them now.
okay? So here we go. Muscle snatch into that squat. It starts with the hands. It does not, you're not moving your hips at all. Hands start, then we go, okay? Hands start, then we go. If you are familiar with the snatch at all, uh, you likely have noticed the noise that the feet make. Something like this, right? Okay, we're gonna start implementing that noise and we're gonna start now moving with a little bit of speed. Okay, so we're gonna get our bar. For me, it's collar to collar. We're gonna slightly bend the knees, right? And we're gonna jump and catch in that bottom position. And stand. We're here. And stand. Okay. Those keys are gonna stay across all of these. I'll mention them again. Wrists underneath. Do not drop the elbows early and press through. And then of course, as always, hip crease below the knee crease, elbows locked, shoulder blades together. Another thing you may have noticed if you're at all familiar with the snatch is the contact with the hips. Now oftentimes coaches don't really like to talk about it. They just like to think more about bar path and keeping the bar close and all of these other things. And it's just kind of something that ends up happening. Me personally, what I've noticed when I coach people is like, I have to address it, I have to address it early, and I have to establish it early. Because it, again, it, these things are very hard to develop once we've developed any sort of technique that don't involve them. Because now we're adding in weight and we gotta take steps backwards. So what we're gonna do with this drill is establish hip contact. This drill is something that I have actually ripped from Alexei Tarakti, who's an Olympic gold medalist. And I'm just gonna call it the Tarakti drill, okay, or the contact drill. And it's very simple at, at its core, okay. All I'm gonna do is bend my knees and get over the top of the bar. So there's a hinge in here as well, okay. That bar is away from me right now, and that's okay. What I'm gonna do is, I'm going to stand at the knees and extend at the hips slightly, keeping my feet on the floor. I'm gonna make slight contact and just bring the bar up a few inches. Now, I want you to notice that I can make that bar rattle with a, with a very small amount of movement. Here, you can hear that rattle, I think, right? Can you hear it over there? Yeah, okay, nice and small. Okay, this is the connection what we're doing is we're making the connection from our hips, knees, our lower body as we pull. And then when we make contact with the hips, it's like we're sending this, this message to our hands to be like, oh, now the upper body is working, okay? It is the connection point from the upper body to the lower body. So as we develop this contact, we can start to get it a little bit bigger and more aggressive, okay? And when we're ready, we're gonna hit and turn over and catch, okay? This is where, guys, we need to take steps back if, if these steps forward are hard, okay? So again, our step back that we, we just did, we can go back to this drill, okay? If that's too much, we can go back to this drill or we can go back to just the muscle snatch. Always working and regressing before you progress if necessary. So again, this drill, the contact drill, or the Tarakti drill, we're developing small contact, maybe one, two, and then on that third one, I'm ready. So now we've established contact, and in this drill, we're pretty much snatching, okay? And again, like I've said throughout this video and the past video, we gotta regress when things start getting weird, and this is definitely gonna be one of those instances. So if you got used to the contact drill, right, We, we we build up that contact, and then finally, we can make contact and drop, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna build up that contact, we're simply gonna go to below the knees, right at mid-shin, essentially where the bar starts. So we're here, and we're gonna equal parts hinge as we are bend our knees, okay? We're not gonna over hinge like this, and we're not gonna bend our knees like this. This is a really bad position. I hate when people are super vertical like this, a 
okay? We need to establish that hinge. We need to establish our knee. So we're gonna go nice and slow down to this position. This is our start position. We're gonna go up and we're gonna make contact and drop. And now we're snatching, okay? So look at how close these two uh, drills are. We have our contact drill, right? We develop contact and now we can make contact and drop. Now I want you to take that mindset and we're gonna go and basically do the contact drill from below the knee. Nothing has changed, right? Contact drill just from below the knee. Okay, you now, having completed that, you are now snatching, okay? And it's only a matter of time before we get you to snatch from the floor, which is going to be our next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our last two drills and we're gonna implement a new drill. So if you recall, we have our contact drill right here. Nice, easy contact. Then we're gonna take that contact drill and we're gonna go into a snatch. Now, we're basically gonna do the contact drill, but it's from below the knee. Okay, now what we're gonna do is that same thing we just did, except these targets right here that I've set up with the plates, this is going to be our alarm to start the movement. So it's gonna look like this. Nice and slow. I tap. Nice and slow, and I go. And notice how I didn't just tap and go, okay? I controlled every movement on the way down and the way up. So again, nice and slow, and nice and slow until I pass the knee. A key component, guys, in the snatch is understanding the pace of the snatch. And I want you to watch some of the best weightlifters. They have control over the bar in the first pull. That is the pull to the knees, from the floor to the knees. And then there's an explosive movement once the bar passes the knees off the hip. Okay, it's a change of speed. And the best weightlifters can go not slow to fast, right? First pull to second pull. They can go fast on the first pull and then faster on the second pull. But what you need to worry about now is just controlling the bar off the floor and then changing speed. So in that last drill, I purposefully set up the plates so that I didn't have to add weight. But I set up the plates so that the bar was at the height it will be when you snatch, okay? Now, I'm an experienced lifter, so I put on 95 pounds. Uh, for, for some of you guys, this part will not pertain. So you'll just continue to lift off of those until you feel comfortable with uh, the, you know, with weight on the sides or any sort of weight on the sides. So you'll lift at that level and you'll just add weight. I mean, you can add, if there's 10 pound plates that are this wide, then you can start lifting from the floor. But if there aren't 10 pound plates that are this wide, continue to lift off of those blocks, okay? What we're gonna do is the exact same thing. Literally just the same thing that we just did but now I don't have that target. The target is the floor. This is called the touch and go deadlift. And as you do this, I want you to think that there is a glass plate underneath both of where these plates are gonna touch. And we don't wanna smash that glass plate. So we're gonna control on the way down. Nice and easy, it's tough. Tap. We're gonna control and then we're gonna change speed. And we're gonna snatch. Okay, so we're gonna stand up. Stand up tall, don't let that bar pull you down. Stand up tall, big breath in, nice and slow. Tap, nice and control, control, control. And explode and catch. And look at the position, okay? So once we've established that touch and go, we are snatching, okay? Now, bridging the gap, from having the bar in our hands and starting the movement from a tall standing posture to now having a bar that's dead on the floor is probably the hardest gap to bridge in weightlifting. As a weightlifting coach, I am constantly trying uh, different ways to figure this portion out because this is the most compensated position you will likely be in in the sport, right? We're thinking about, you know, when you deadlift, you get your hips right under you and you're just right here. All right, just like this, okay? 
When we snatch, I mean, look at this position I have to go from. This is a tough position to manage. So this is where the regression is so important. We have to remember these drills that we came from. Because when we start to think, okay, now here's a dead bar, shit's gonna start getting weird, okay? Well, what we wanna do is try and bridge that gap and take a small leap instead of trying to jump all the way across to the other side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up, and this is key, if we can get uh, in on my feet here, maybe pan down on my feet. I like to get, see where these straps are? That's where I'm gonna get this bar uh, over my foot, okay? We're not gonna go back here towards the shin like you would in a deadlift. We're not even gonna be here. We're actually gonna be kind of forward. Now, as I go to approach this bar, I need to make sure that I get my knees to cover the bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with my knees covering the bar. Now my knees don't go anywhere from this position. They don't go back as I go grab the bar. They don't go forward as I grab the bar, okay? They cover, then I grab the bar, just like that, okay? They cover, then I grab the bar. That way we can get that equal pressure in the feet. So now, what we're gonna do for this drill is we're gonna act like the bar is in our hands, just like it was in the drill prior. We're gonna Stand tall, we're gonna go nice and slow. Get our hands where they need to be. We're gonna control off the floor. Make contact and catch. So we're acting like we're doing a touch and go rep when in all reality, we're just doing a rep, okay? So again, cover the bar with the knees. Nice and slow on the way down. Eyes forward, nice and slow to start and explode. Just like that. So now all that's left is to snatch, okay? There's gonna be a few key things that I'm gonna go over here, but pretty much you're already there. So as I said before, we're gonna line up in the proper position. Now. Coaches have said to put your feet at exactly hip width. So if you jump, that would be where your feet are. I like to actually be a little bit wider. And I don't think too much about stomping my feet or anything. They kind of end up shuffling out to the sides. But I actually do like a little bit wider of a stance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the bar with our knees like we have been before. We're gonna go down and we're gonna keep our back straight. Now, what I see a lot of people do is they go to grab the bar and they round their back, right? Now you have to make this really big effort to unround your back. Nonsense. Keep your back straight. Knees cover the bar. Keep those knees over the bar and grab it. Now my eyes are forward. What I'm gonna do here is take a breath in. Slow pull and go, okay? That's called a static start, okay? What I actually like to do is introduce what's called a dynamic start. And you'll see almost every top weightlifter, I'd say high percentage of top weightlifter. I think the Chinese, they do static starts, but even then they get a little bit of English going before they get the bar moving. But the dynamic start is like, there's a lot of world records. The, some of the best ever do dynamic starts. And I think it's worthwhile to start thinking about it. So what we'll do is we'll get to that same position. Knees cover the bar, down to the beginning right here. Chest is up. All I'm gonna do is take a breath in and I'm gonna lift my hips just a little bit and lower them under control and go into my rep, okay? Now, I didn't control the bar slow off the floor and go, okay? I was able to go, like I'd said before, fast off the floor to faster when I pass the knees. If your tempo and timing is weird and you're missing the hips, the best thing you can do is just go really slow off of the floor. It puts the best governor on this movement. You'd be shocked at how well that can change things for you and your mindset can change. Okay, so now I'm gonna do just a little snatch exhibition for you guys. Maybe throw a little weight on the bar, see how that feels, but then you can gotta get a sense of my pace and my energy while I train. Some of the little quirks that I have and that I've developed, I'll, I'll talk about them along the way. 
The first like quirk that I have, I like to actually get down here low, and you can see my heels are already off the ground. And what this does is this makes sure that my knees are in a good position when I pull or start to pull. But the big thing is, and you'll see from this angle, is my back is straight. See, if I put my heels down and I get into this really low position, I hunch over. So what I'm trying to do when I get into this position is just simply set my back. And it, it's like if you've ever seen um, like a woman in heels go to talk to a child, she gets down in the best squat posture ever. She's up, you know, perfectly upright. Essentially, that's what, you know, I'm down here. I'm just trying to get my back nice and settled. And then when I'm in this position, I don't lose it. Right here, I got my grip. Awesome. Heels down, butt goes high. My back is still straight. I'll take a breath in. And I'll lift, lower. I'm gonna do a little. I think, guys, I think the bar went away from me on that one. It wasn't as focused, so what I'm gonna think about now is get that bar in tight. Not, maybe not hit it so hard going away and just try to get vertical after I make contact. Nice and low, get everything settled. Yeah, much more solid. Another really cool thing about weightlifting, get to use chalk. Pool players use chalk. Who else uses chalk? Gymnasts use chalk, right? Crossfitters use chalk. They use everything though. I like to get, make sure I get some on my thumb, some on my palm, and then I like to just clap it a little bit, make sure I get the excess off. Now I'm ready to go. All right, so there you have it. That is the complete and full progression to get you from going, from not snatching at all to snatching something. In my opinion, I think that the snatch is both the most compelling and complex lift that we can do in any strength sport, in any gym. Uh, and to me, there is nothing more worthwhile than completing a very solid sound technically sound snatch. So if you guys like this, please subscribe and continue to watch the rest of this instructional. I appreciate you for stopping by.